YouTube channel You Can Be Healthier TV. I'm your video host today, Dr. Mamatha Chatriki, and I'm thrilled to welcome back our young rising star of STEM education, Sophia Lee. Sophia is here to introduce the first of her video series called Image in That. This is a series of lectures aimed to introduce teens and young curious adults like herself about imaging the human body and its disease processes with the help of imaging studies such as CTs and MRIs. Welcome, Sophia. Tell me, how did you come up with such a name as Imaging That? I wanted to have a catchy phrase that would embody the way that I'm going to teach about the human body. My aim is to do this through the use of CT and MRI scans, which is in the specialty of radiology, also called imaging. And I was just so amazed by all of it and thought, wow, imagine that. Imagine that you could see all this inside an actual human body. And there you have it. That's when I came up with my name for my series, Image in That. Now let us watch the first in the video series of Image in That about the abdomen and pelvis, then we'll catch up to talk about some fun facts later. Take it away. Hello, and welcome to lesson 1.0, where we will be going over the major parts of the human abdomen and pelvis. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to distinguish all parts of the human abdomen and pelvis on a CT scan. More specifically, you will be able to name organs and vessels such as the heart, liver, large bowel or colon, small bowel, spleen, pancreas, stomach, gallbladder, appendix, aorta, IVC, adrenals, kidneys, bladder, and uterus. It is also important to know how a CT scan is read. So we will be looking at an example. The first thing we will be going into is the process of getting into a CT scanner as a patient. So this is called a computed tomography scan or a CT scan. The CT scanner basically takes images of the person lying inside it using a revolving x-ray tube. These photos are then processed on a computer to create cross-section images or virtual slices of the body, which is what we will be looking at. So this is our first example, our first CT scan example. We are looking as if the patient went into the scanner head first with their feet facing us which is why this is the right side and this is the left side. This is how all CT scans are conventionally read, meaning that the right side is always here and the left side is always here. These are the axial images, which are horizontal images as if the patient is sliced like a cake from the head to the feet. In this example, we will be looking at slices of the lung bases down to the hips. In advance, I would like to let you all know that none of these organs are actually black, white, or gray. The images just get processed that way on a CT scan, so that's how we read them. Now, let's get into it. As you can see, here's the heart. Surrounding the heart on both sides are the lungs. This is the right lung and the left lung. There are different ways to look at the lungs themselves, but that will be another topic. Right now, in this example, the lungs are black. As you can probably tell, there are white blood vessels inside of the lungs. Contrast or dye is injected into the body to make vessels white. This is why we see these little blood vessels inside the lungs as white dots. This is also why the heart is white. The biggest artery of the body is the aorta, which appears right here and looks like a big white circle. Well, as we keep on scrolling down, we come across the liver, which is the big wedge right here. And then we also see the spleen, which appears right here. This is the stomach and aorta, also backbone. And then we also come across the pancreas, which is this little wedge right here and the gallbladder. 
there are two glands and they're called the adrenals then we also have the IVC which is this dot here. and it's here you can call it the IVC but it's actually called the inferior vena cava which is the largest vein in the body as we also scroll we see two kidneys the right and the left and they look like little beans and then this is the large bowel which you can think of as a picture frame and the small bowel which is the picture inside so that's how i think of it so as we keep on scrolling we come across this little sausage looking organ which is called the appendix and we will be talking about this next lesson so stay in tune then we will keep on scrolling and then we see keep on scrolling this is the bladder it's like a big oval and it contains urine this patient has a full bladder, meaning that they are ready to urinate. Once they go to the restroom, their bl bladder will deflate like a balloon. And behind the bladder is the uterus, meaning that this person is genetically a female. So we can tell that that's really cool. Now we will go through these organs one more time just to remember everything. So this is the heart. These two are the lungs and little blood vessels. This is the liver, okay? And then we have the spleen, the stomach. Remember, this is the right side and this is the left side. The aorta, the pancreas, the gallbladder, the two adrenals, okay? Two adrenals. These V-shaped things. Two adrenals, okay, IVC. And then we have the kidneys coming up, large bowel or colon, small bowel, and then we also have the, okay, we're going to keep on scrolling, and then we come across the appendix, this little sausage, and then, well, it's not actually a sausage, but that's how it looks to me, and we come across the bladder the bladder and the uterus so that is our lesson for today i hope you enjoyed we will be going more in depth about the functions of all these organs in the coming lesson thank you for watching sophia that was an enlightening video thank you i'd just like to ask a few questions to try and elaborate on some of the topics you covered First of all, you mentioned the liver. Can you go into a bit of detail about its function? The liver is the largest organ in your body weighing between 3 to 3.5 pounds and lives normally in the right upper abdomen just beneath your ribcage and a little above the stomach. It acts like a filtration system and rids the body of toxins. It also produces something called bile, which aids in digestion and absorption of fats and vitamins such as A, D, E, and K. The liver holds about one pint, or 13% of the body's blood supply at any given moment. All the blood leaving the stomach and intestines passes through the liver. The liver processes this blood and breaks down, balances, and creates nutrients. It also metabolizes drugs into forms that are easier to use for the rest of the body and that are non-toxic. More than 500 vital functions have been identified with the liver. How do we maintain a healthy liver? The best way to avoid liver disease is to take active steps towards a healthy life. Some ways you can do this are by avoiding illicit drugs, drinking alcohol moderately, exercising regularly, eating healthy foods, and vaccinating when traveling against hepatitis A and B. That's fascinating stuff. Let's go on to the spleen. Can you elaborate a little bit more about the spleen? The spleen is a fist-sized organ in the upper left side of your abdomen, next to your stomach and behind your left ribs. 
It is an important part of your immune system, but you can survive without it. This is because the liver can take over many of the spleen's functions. The three main functions of the spleen are storing blood, filtering blood by getting rid of older damaged blood cells, and lastly, making white blood cells and antibodies that help you fight infection. The next organ you talked about is the pancreas. Now, lots of people are aware that diabetes has to do with the pancreas, but that is just a part of the functions of the pancreas. Can you tell us a little bit more? Your pancreas plays an important role in digestion. It is located inside of your abdomen, just behind the stomach, and it's spongy. It's about six to 10 inches long and is shaped like a fish extending horizontally across the abdomen. Of digestion, your pancreas makes pancreatic juices called enzymes. These enzymes break down sugar, fat, and starches. It also makes hormones that help regulate the distribution of nutrients, including sugar. Two of the main pancreatic hormones are insulin, which acts to lower blood sugar, and glucagon, which acts to raise blood sugar. Maintaining proper blood sugar levels is crucial to the functioning of key organs, including brain, liver, and kidney. Now we've all heard about gallbladder attacks. Tell us a little bit about the function of the gallbladder, how people get these attacks, and how this can be prevented. The gallbladder is a small sac underneath the liver that holds extra bile made by the liver until it is pumped into the small intestine. Gallstones form when bile stored in the gallbladder hardens into a stone-like material. Too much cholesterol, bile salts, or bilirubin can cause gallstones. Also, if your gallbladder does not empty all the way, that can make your bile very concentrated. Obesity, an unhealthy diet, and lack of exercise are some of the risk factors for getting gallstones. Next, you talked about the adrenals and kidneys. Can you tell us about their functions? Adrenal glands produce hormones that help regulate your metabolism, immune system, blood pressure, response to stress, and other essential functions. Your kidneys remove waste and extra fluid from your body. They also remove acid that is produced by the cells of your body and maintain a healthy balance of water, salts, and minerals such as sodium, calcium, phosphorus, and potassium in your blood. What are the functions of the small intestine and the large intestine? The small bowel or intestine occupies most of the abdominal cavity space. You can think of it as a picture inside the picture frame, which is the large bowel. Can you believe it is a 21 foot long tube? This is where most of the digestion occurs. The small intestine breaks down fats, starches, and proteins into fatty acids, which can then be absorbed. The food you eat can take three to five hours to digest. The large intestine is only about five feet long, but wider than the small bowel. It is the last part of the digestive tract. The colon's job is to dehydrate what is left of the food and form it into stools or poo-poo. Wow, that was a whirlwind tour of the abdomen. Thank you so much for the clear and simple explanations. And thank you viewers for tuning in to this fascinating video. We can see inside a real human. Imagine that. Make sure you subscribe to You Can Be Healthier TV channel so you can enjoy more educational and inspiring videos like this. Make sure to tune in next time to Sophia's next topic, which is called the appendix and appendicitis, where she will show you CT images and MRI images of not only the normal human appendix, but also when it gets inflamed and how that diagnosis can be made. Bye for now.